Good evening. Welcome to our daily devotional scripture that encourages you to pray. We are using this book, The Red Letter Challenge, as the basis for our daily devotions and our sermon series. It's a resource put together by Pastor Zach Zender, an LCMS pastor, fourth generation LCMS pastor. And we are in the week on forgiveness. There's five focuses in this uh, resource. And it's all about the life of the disciple, uh, trying to put into practice the words of Christ. And in so many translations, those words are printed in the color red. And so therefore, the red letter challenge. I want to encourage you uh, to get out your Bible, get out your pen, paper, take some notes. I think God's going to talk to you through the devotion tonight. And also want to encourage you to uh, share this uh, broadcast onto your social media. And talk, talk it up. You know, lots of hearts, smiley faces, thumbs up, all those great positive emojis. Uh, you raise the rankings in Facebook's algorithm when you do that. And it's amazing um, how many people are taking advantage of these resources that we're putting out. A typical weekend, we're having about a thousand people join us for worship via our social media. And in our daily devotionals, we'll have between 150 to 250 people consistently in our daily devotionals. And so the coronavirus has been very difficult, very challenging, um, but it has also made it available, uh, possible for us to try new technology. And so we're not gonna go back to how things were when this coronavirus is over, by no means. We're gonna use these new ministry platforms and we're gonna uh, reach out and connect with people uh, in ways that we have never done before. So we, we do praise God for that. Uh, God takes uh, the difficulties of this world and, uh, and changes them uh, for his glory. Amen. Amen. Uh, as you can see, I am in uniform. Uh, I'm a chaplain with the uh, Air National Guard. And my wing is the 183rd wing in Springfield, Illinois. And I'm staying out in the Legacy Park uh, where I'm surrounded by some of the planes that uh, our wing has flown over the years. And today I'm staying in front of the F-4 Phantom, which is a really it's a cool classic plane. And um, I'm down here this week. I'm doing uh, uh, drill days that were not able to be done earlier in the year because of the coronavirus. And so just catching up and getting to do ministry with the uh, airmen down here, making devotions for them also that they store on the uh, share drive here. And then they can access anytime they want to. So, guys, let's uh, bow our heads. We're going to look at day 15. Uh, we're going to bow our heads for a word of prayer. And... Uh, Really looking forward to getting into the devotion. It's one of my favorites, really, so far as we're going through this devotional resource. So let's, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love and your mercy. It's new to us every day. We thank you, Father, for the gift of faith. We thank you for the gift of forgiveness. Father, help us to share forgiveness with others. Help us not to be so judgmental. Grow us, Father. Shape us. Help us to grow in our walk with you today. Father, we pray all these things in Jesus' name for your glory. And all of God's children, we all say amen. Amen. I got to say, today's devotional is one that I just, I think I just really liked a lot. Uh, the, the first illustration here on page 997 about the commercial, about the guy making dinner and, and spills the tomato sauce and he's cutting stuff up and the cat gets in the sauce and he picks up the cat and, and, the, and of course the cat's covered with tomato sauce. He's got a big knife in his hand and his wife walks in the room in the kitchen there and she's, you know, aghast. Um, and the point being, you know, don't jump to conclusions conclusions, you know, I uh, thought that was just really good. And uh, the story about the Ann Landers um, uh, illustration there, uh, somebody being judgmental about how people spend food stamps and then the person uh, writing in later, a couple weeks later, explaining that they were the person that was being written about and why they use the food stamps in that way is for their daughter who is, uh, had a terminal illness. And so very touching, very powerful. And of course, uh, Matthew 7, uh, verse 1, you know, Jesus says, why do you notice the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye when you've got a plank in your own eye? And I really liked, you know, what Pastor Zender points out here on the next page about if you, if you, you know, when you have even just like a little bug or even just a little hair in your eye, I mean, that is painful. It's you try to get rid of that. Right. And so when Jesus says, you know, if, if you had a plank in your eye, I mean, my gosh, that would be like your total focus, your total uh, preoccupation would be to get rid of that. And so Jesus is just making this very powerful illustration of, you know, take care of what's wrong with you first before, you know, judging people around you. And, um, you know, the purpose of this book, really, and the purpose of this, this resource is to help us to more clearly share the love of Christ with other people. 
And um, this is just so important because the fact of the matter is that a lot of people perceive Christians to be judgmental. Um, and they perceive Christians to be that way because they've experienced many Christians to be that way. I mean, even, you know, within the church, uh, I, I have to tell you, I, I've seen it. You know, uh, church members be very judgmental uh, towards others, even within the church, let alone outside of the church. And so um, that's not a winsome witness, brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and we all have our work to do with that. And so this topic of forgiveness is just uh, super important. And... Um, you know, then on the final page of the devotion for today, then Pastor Zender talks about, you know, really two goals uh, to do. And one is, you know, thank God for the opportunity we have to live a plank-free life. And I think that's a, there's a lot to give God thanks for with that. So why not give a thumbs up, smile face, heart, praise clap right now. And then also number two, and I really like this, you know, write down the names of any individuals or groups of people you might have improperly judged in the past and uh, ask God for forgiveness. And so I think, you know, this whole thing about judging not, uh, obviously there's the um, issue of, you know, spiritually not judging other people. But then I think also uh, it goes beyond that. It goes, it also goes into just into our relationships with other people, especially when I think of like in, in the workplace. Because I, I think it's, it's, it's possible to say, okay, I'm not gonna spiritually judge other people, but, when it comes to work, then that's a different matter. And, and I just wanna challenge that a little bit. I wanna try and give you some healthy thoughts, uh, ideas regarding that. So the, um, you know, I think one thing to consider is, for example, work relationships, you think about a, a supervisor, for example. You know, uh, I know we have members in our church who own businesses or, or supervise large numbers of people. And so, you know, I think if, as a supervisor in that supervisory role, you have to, you know, ask yourself when when you have uh, a, a, an employee that you have to address because of work performance. You know, how do I handle this in a non-judgmental way? Vice versa, when you're an employee and you have a supervisor who needs to talk with you about your performance, you know, how do you receive that evaluation without just being judgmental towards them? Because that's, quite frankly, that's a two-way street. Um, I think also, you know, uh, customer relationships. It's, it's, uh, uh, it can be very easy to be judgmental of customers, to, to, to look at them and to say, well, you know, they're just trying to take advantage of me. Um, they're asking for something they shouldn't be asking for. And, um, and not to be uh, Christ-like in our relationship with them. And, you know, we are to be the representatives of Christ in all aspects of our lives, not just when we're talking about our faith. Amen? Amen. Um, I think also that it, it can be very challenging uh, to be non-judgmental when we're working with service providers. And that service provider might be your hairdresser. You know, how do you react to your hairdresser at the end when she says to you, how do you like it? What do you think? How do you respond in a non-judgmental way, uh, especially if there's something that you think needs to be addressed? Um, you know, I think it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's challenging to live out this um, aspect of forgiveness, of, of being non-judgmental towards others. And so I just wanna share some thoughts with you. Um, if you have um, people that you supervise and you know you need to deal with them uh, in terms of their performance, you know, how do you do that as a Christian? You know, what role does your faith play in this? Because I know in our church, uh, we have people who, who have, this is their daily reality. They supervise people, they own businesses. And so then do they just check, do you just check your faith at the door? No, you know, so, but then how do you live out your faith in the workplace with employees that you need to supervise? And I've just got some, some thoughts I wanna share with you. I think, first of all, you've gotta have agree, some things that are agreed upon with your employees. Uh, one is standards. What are, what are the standards that you expect from them, right? Uh, another thing that you have to have agreed upon with your employees is goals. What are, what are the mutually agreed upon goals that, that, that are in place, that, that the employees are working for? And, uh, and then thirdly, an agreed upon feedback loop so that then they know you're going to be giving them feedback and that they will then have an opportunity to respond with feedback of their own to the feedback, right? 
And uh, and I think if you're gonna if you're a supervisor, you have a responsibility to really think through how you're going to live out your Christian life with those people you supervise. Amen. Amen. And then also, I think, so there's those three things that are you would have agreed upon with your employees. But I think there's two things that you would provide. You would know that you're going to provide them. And one is that you're going to provide them honesty. And that's just, that's really important. That you're going to be honest in your evaluation of them. Um, it's not going to be personality driven. It's going to be performance focused. And you're not going to be comparing them to other employees. It's going to be an honest evaluation of them. And the last thing I would say is that you would, and I, this is something I absolutely believe in. If you supervise people, you have to provide them with a pathway to success. You have to provide them with a pathway to success. And I think that keeps you from being just judgmental also. Um, because by a pathway to success, then what I mean by that is that as a supervisor, then you would say to your uh, employees, you would say, so um, here are the things I think you need to do to succeed. And I'm going to stand behind what I'm saying. And if you will take this pathway that I'm putting in front of you uh, and, and work with this and, and try to do this, I'm going to try and help you succeed in it. And, and if this pathway does not lead to success, I will take responsibility as your supervisor for that lack of success. Because then you were trying to do what you were asked and, uh, and then the responsibility is, is mine as your supervisor. So then there's shared ownership in the outcome. Being non-judgmental of others is, it's so important. Uh, being non-judgmental does not mean that you don't provide honest feedback to performance. It absolutely, it, it absolutely means that, that we need to do that. But we also remember that we have um, received grace. And so because of this gift of grace, that then we do not think that others are not deserving of grace also, or that we are any better than they are, because we are all sinners who've been saved by grace. Amen? Amen. And so I, I just, I really hope that um, that as we go through this devotional, you think of through to yourself, not only, you know, how this uh, impacts your personal spiritual walk, you know, how you think about things on Sunday morning or when you're having devotions at night, but really how it impacts your daily life. Because that in the end is the goal of this, is that we would more clearly reveal the love of Jesus in the lives of those around us. Love doing these devotions with you, with these cool backdrops. Um, hoping to get over to the Hush House later this week and uh, show you that. Uh, that's a cool cool place on our base here where we test the engines after we rebuilt them. And that's a really cool process to see also. So uh, I pray God's richest blessings on your day. Happy people. And look forward to being with you in our daily devotion tomorrow night at 715. Let's go in peace. Let's serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.